Hi guys, it's Tori. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on a book that I recently finished, which is Updraft by Fran Wild. So if you only want the absolute, like, spoiler-free version of my thoughts, I will give those to you at the beginning, and then if you want to listen to the rest, um, you can stick around on the video um, after that. I have also reviewed this book on Goodreads, so if you want to go over to my Goodreads account and check out my written review of this, it says essentially the same thing that I'm going to be talking about here in the video. I have a lot to say about this book, so let's get started. Okay, first of all, I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, and I was kind of leaning more towards the two and a half star, but I decided to be generous and give it a three star since it was my um, first review. And I have definitely, definitely read fantasy books that I have liked a lot less than this one. Those of you that are new to my channel, I am an extremely character driven writer and reader, so for me, the characters and the relationships between the characters in a story are literally the most important thing to me about the entire story. Overall impression of this book, it took me three and a half days to read this, which for me is actually an incredibly slow <laughs> read because this is not a very long book. It's 381 pages and I will get to that. I should probably preface this by saying that I have the attention span of a gnat, so it really takes a lot of movement and intrigue and very exciting characters to hold my attention throughout a book. So if you are not that person, if you are the person who loves to just like fall into the concept and kind of meander your way through the book, this might be a perfect fit for you. I definitely consider this a concept-driven book as opposed to a plotline-driven or a character-driven book. I would not recommend this as a character-driven book. I think it has a really interesting organic environment conceptually, and I was really intrigued by some of the creatures, monsters, uh, concepts of the flyers, the Society of Flyers, all of that I found really interesting, but I did also feel like there wasn't enough. It kind of felt unfinished and vague. So that was a really big disappointment for me. I would have liked to see a lot more world building in this book because I think the foundation was really interesting and had a lot of potential. My second thing is that because I'm such a character driven reader, I obviously pay a lot of attention to the characters and their relationships. I found these characters to be pretty lackluster and at times even robotic. Um, I didn't really connect with any of them. The main character I felt like was not, she kind of followed the headstrong chosen one archetype, but there wasn't really much else to her. If you're gonna pull a chosen one archetype, make sure that your character has some other quality besides being headstrong because headstrong by itself is not enough to make a character. So I felt like in a lot of ways Kirit, who is the main character, um, just kind of existed to break all the rules that nobody else was willing to break because she was headstrong. I almost, almost put this book down about four times within the first 100 or 150 pages and I kept telling myself I'm just, I'm gonna give it one more 100 pages and just see if anything exciting happens. The first hundred pages, if you are not a fan of books that kind of move slowly into the plot, this is going to be a little harder for you to get through. The first hundred pages, man, whew, it was it was a long process. But the last bit of the book definitely picked up the pace, which I really appreciated. And there's a lot of really cool, like, flight combat type stuff in here that I found really interesting. And yeah, so overall, if you want to read this book and you like really conceptually driven books that might move a little bit slower in the beginning and you don't really care about that, um, I definitely wouldn't say like don't read this book. This is not on my do not read list. Moving on, if you don't want to know more details or any 
very subtle spoilers. Um, I'm not going to give anything crazy away, but if you don't want to know anything about the book, stop watching here. Thanks for coming, and I will see you later. Moving to page two of our notes. Page two of notes. Concept-wise, I think this book has a lot of really interesting world-building elements in it. I think the idea of the organic world that is being created around this society of flyers is really intriguing. Um, they live in these, like, living bone towers that um, the singers, which is kind of an upper class group of people, kind of sing into existence and help grow these towers so there's more space for people to live as these towers get higher and higher and higher above the clouds. As far as tropes go, um, this is definitely a lower class versus upper class uprising trope and it's also definitely got chosen one trope themes in it, um, neither of which I'm like totally against if they're done well. Throughout the whole book it was very vague. It was, it felt unfinished to me. I felt like she introduced a lot of really interesting concept elements in the story and then just kind of almost left too much to our imagination and I'm all for doing that as long as you give them enough richness and depth that your reader can really feel like they're a part of the world and they're really walking through the environment with the characters, that's great. I did not feel like that. I had a really hard time um, understanding all of the finer details of how this world worked. I didn't feel like she spent enough time talking about that or explaining it. When it comes to the sky mouth monsters, I found them extremely interesting. Like the idea that they're completely invisible until their mouth opens and then you're confronted with this giant maw of razor sharp teeth. I'm interested. I'm excited for this. This is an exciting concept. Let's, let's check this out. What I found really interesting about this though is at the beginning when we're introduced to these terrifying creatures, basically the whole mood of the characters in the book was like, yeah, you know, we shut our, our shutters at night and we like kind of try to stay away from them and like I don't know I just felt like the urgency in the writing style about these creatures that could literally suck you out of your windows and you'd never see them until you're disappearing down their throat I don't know I feel like I would be a little bit more concerned about that but that's just me and then later on it was like oh my gosh remember the sky mouths are like really scary and terrifying and I was like well Sure, we'll just shut the shutters. We'll be fine. So I think the concept was used to drive the plot line a lot more than the actual plot line was. Um, and like I kind of mentioned in the overview, the first hundred pages of this book are very slow. They're very, the, the I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but like the, the characters are slow, the relationships are slow, the explanation of the world and what's going on in it is really slow. She would kind of like, build up my excitement for things and then drop it like it's hot. For example, on page 101, um, Kirit is talking, the main character, is talking to her mother, Azarit, who has been a traitor and has been flying around the city for a really long time, but there's a history there that Kirit, you know, doesn't know all of it yet, and they're having this conversation, and Azarit is now going to give us some exposition. <sighs> the way she starts this conversation is, when you were very young. Okay, like, please, 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 please don't start conversations between a parent and a child with, when you were very young, this happened, exposition. That's kind of nitpicky, but I'm just saying it was kind of like that where some of the lines were just so horrifically cheesy that I was like, okay, we're finally having a deep conversation with these characters and it's full of cheese. Like I mentioned also in the overview, the plot events really didn't start getting, picking up speed until about 150 pages from the end, and the tropes that were used in it, eh, meh, I don't know. I've, I've definitely seen them done better, and the chosen one archetype, like, you gotta be careful with it and you gotta do it a certain way so that it doesn't become almost deus ex machina-like, which 
if anybody doesn't know what that means, it's basically a term that means God in the machine. It's a theater term and it essentially just stands for a character or a catalyst or a plot element that shows up out of nowhere to just fix everything or like change the plot in a favorable way or whatever it is. And I feel like the chosen one archetypes can often do that where they just kind of show up and they just fix everything because they're the chosen one for no reason. They're just special. This is not a character driven novel, but I still have a lot to say about the characters because I pay a lot of attention to those. Usually what ends up happening for me in books and in films is that I end up loving the side characters more than the main characters. This happens to me all the time and I think one of the reasons for that is because usually the side character has a personality and they're not burdened by all of the main character things that main characters are burdened by. In this case, the main character, Kirit, who is a late teens, like 16-ish, 17-ish, somewhere in there, um, girl, she is, v there's just not a lot going on. I found the relationship between her and almost every other character in the book to be awkward and confusing. Um, the relationship she has with her mother is really awkward <laughs> and I didn't really understand why. She also has a childhood friend, Nat, who is a boy who's slightly older than her. Nat, the author spends a lot of time, especially in the beginning of the book, telling us that Nat and Kirit are wing siblings. They love each other. They have been friends since they were babies. They are like, and you guys, friendship tropes are like my favorite thing ever. I am all about friendship tropes. There's really no chemistry between them until like the last part of the book that they're in together. And that was really disappointing to me because I was like, oh man, wing siblings, dude, like we've been friends for ages and this is gonna be awesome. Love me some good old friends. <sighs> There's a singer, which again is one of the like, you know, upper class dudes that kind of rule the city and his name is Wick. And Wick is never, he never is like, it's never explained how old he is. Um, in the beginning, his interactions with Kirit are borderline creepy, and I definitely thought, oh my gosh, main antagonist, obviously. But later on, it kind of comes out that he's really not, and he's kind of actually a good guy. She even, like, puts in a, a little line that could suggest that maybe at some point they could be more than friends. I will say, that one of the things I really appreciated about this is that Fran Wilde did not use romance as any sort of core element of this story. And that really impressed me. I was really, I got to the end of the book and I was like, wait, like nobody's a thing. They're just, wow, like that's, wow. If you're still watching, I did kind of warn that there might be subtle spoilers, so if you find that spoiling, I'm really sorry. Wick got a lot more interesting toward the end of the book because we actually, I don't know, he actually kind of like had a personality. Celis, who is another acolyte with Kirit when she starts training to be a singer, um, she just hates Kirit because she's, you know, She's kind of, she was born in the upper class, so she has a superiority complex. And then five minutes later, she's like, we're sisters, we're together. We're gonna do this together. And then five minutes later, she's like, you're beneath me, I hate you. And the whole time I was literally getting whiplash from this character, cause I'm like, okay, do you wanna like pick a side at some point? Because right now I'm like super confused about how you actually feel about Kirit. I have no idea. I will say like there was probably more motive for Celis to be hating on Kirit than there are in a lot of YA novels where there's girl hate shown. So I will say, I will say like disclaimer that I did feel like the motivation was at least more well explained. This definitely has 
more of a YA bent to it. I do feel like this book has a lot of really interesting concepts in it and I think that it just feels like it's unfinished. It feels like with a little bit more development and fleshing out of the characters and the plotline and the the world itself that this this book has a lot of potential and I think it's going to be interesting um, for somebody that's really into conceptual fantasy you know give it a try see what you think if you like just kind of meandering your way through a book and that's fine with you I would recommend this book that's the end of my thoughts on Updraft by Fran Wild um, I definitely will put a link to my Goodreads account so you can go check out my written review of this, which is essentially more of what I just said in the video. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you have read this book, I would be very interested to know what your thoughts on it were. Um, and if this is your favorite book ever, like, that's awesome and go you. If we were all the same, life would be insanely boring. I will see you guys on my channel next time.